that further down the line in 1919 when there was a reorganisation of the brigades um, and uh, Liam Lynch, his great comrade, became OC of the brigade in the area. Uh, Michael Fitzgerald was then elected OC. But the, as officer commanding, Michael Fitzgerald was very, very active and he would have been involved, for example, in taking the first RIC barracks for the purposes of getting their arms in Aradlin in September of 1919. And uh, they used the roofs, which some of you here would be familiar with from the roofs that went on in uh, the taking of the military barracks in Mallow. Basically, they waited for the complement of volunteers or of um, RIC to be outside of the barracks on other duties. They moved to take over the barracks when there was only one RIC man left, and lo and behold, he was gone out to the wells to get a bit of water and was surprised when he found that the barracks was otherwise occupied. So, Michael Fitzgerald's daily job at that stage was working with a mill in Plantulan, which is south of from my town, and he had he had created a hide with within one of the the drums in the mill, you know, the, the big grain silos. He had created a room under one of those to hide arms, so he was still thinking like a quartermaster. He wasn't going to let this these weapons away easily. Um, on another occasion, there was one thing taking weapons, but you needed ammunition as well. And they got hold of information that there was a train coming from uh, Cork to provide the major ministry town as a place with ammunition and with arms. So they arranged with the, with the uh, people on the railway in Plessy to put one of the cars into the siding that contained all the ammunition. And they managed to get all the ammunition from that, so they had then all the three or three bullets they wanted. On the line then they decided that they need more, needed more rifles and of course the Wesleyan Chapel episode where they, I suppose, put a group of people out parallel to a parade of soldiers to the Wesleyan Chapel and took the rifles off them. That would have been one of his last military operations and they successfully got away with, I think, 14 rifles on the day. Um, one of the English soldiers, the occupying soldiers, was injured and died from his wounds and that day other soldiers were injured as well, but they got the arms away safely and managed to conceal them. Um, he was rounded up not too long after that um, by the RIC and taken for, uh, before the, the magistrates be charged with whatever offences they thought they could charge him with. But of course, at that stage of the conflict, the Republican courts had been formed in June of 1920, and the political system where, let's say, Dáil Éireann had met, etc., they had appointed by this stage a Supreme Court, Circuit Courts and District Courts, and these had begun to function, and function very well. And the British in their assize court system were finding it very difficult to even get juries, but they charged them before a grand jury with a number of other men, and they ended up not being able to put a jury together to, to try him. So he was held on remand. And when Terence McSweeney and the people that were with him in the city hall were um, arrested by the English in August. Um, he was still in jail and he decided he joined the major Cork hunger strike that was then underway. Um, there were nine people on that, including John Murphy, who also died. And um, Dern McSweeney, of course, had declared that his chief magistrate of the court of, of the city 
he was Lord Mayor and Chief Magistrate, that was his official title, that they had no right to try him. And he told them that one way or the other he'd be free within a month. So Michael Fitzgerald, as it turned out, was of the three that were to die, Michael Fitzgerald died first after 63 days. When it came to the time of his funeral, the volunteers knew very well that Terence Spice Meany was very close to death at that stage. So they said they'd need the city hall for his line in state. So Michael Fitzgerald's body was taken directly from where he lay in Cork Jail, which is now part of UCC, as most of you would know. It was taken to St. Peter and Paul's Church, and huge, huge numbers of people followed in the cortege to that church. But also, British soldiers in lorries decided they were going to pay attention as well. And they actually stormed into the church when his body had been received with drawn revolvers and bayonets and rifles, and went up to the front of the church and delivered an ultimatum to the priest that the funeral at most would have 100 people. And they marched out again. But of course, such was the esteem that Michael Fitzgerald was held in. He had a massive funeral out of Cork, and a massive funeral into Troy when he arrived for burial in Troy. So the Gwini Oisle, Barra Gwaelach, Barra Avi, Anna Sinege is Saoirse na Héarna Corcum Cín, Ní Beig a Lehead Aum Arís.